Now there's one you don't see too often. Tree broke right at the base. Foliage on the tree looks pretty good. It's pretty full all the way around. Hit the neighbor's house pretty solid. Let's take a look at the base of this tree. Now there's a considerable amount of decay in this pine. And you know, had I had I inspected this tree, I don't think I would have seen this. There is, it is just riddled with, it looks like termites. The wood is just like powder. It is so bad. This is really amazing. This is an Aleppo pine, completely fractured at the base. And if this was upright, uh, <laughs> this is one of those situations that you look at it, you're always surprised. And with the amount of foliage up there, I would have not guessed that it was as weak as it is. Truly amazing. The whole tree is resting on the neighbor's house and a few low limbs down underneath. It's on the fence but it's not supporting anything. And you can see the whole trunk is up off the ground all the way down. So this is a type of job that you got to be really careful of because you could, uh, once you start taking off the support off the roof, the whole thing could settle down and actually um, increase the damage. As you make that last cut, it could fall off and break a window or or uh, drag into the house and make things even worse. So you have to have to be real careful. It'd be a good idea to put up some kind of a prop to support the weight for that uh, final cut to get it off of the roof. This Aleppo pine that failed rested on the neighbor's house and did considerable damage. And to get it safely off the house, we have to build uh, somewhat of a support system. The uh, guys didn't have any timber with them, so they improvised and put in this little piece of uh, wood from the tree. And it's not as good as I'd like, but it's supporting the weight of this up over the, the house. There's a few branches are still on the ground, but uh, we're going to try to save the fence and try to keep from breaking any more windows. So you've got to, uh, you've got to keep that last bit of tree from falling all the way down. And insurance will cover it. It's got a lot of compression wood here, so I'm guessing that this tree was leaning significantly before it popped off. And I'm also noticing um, some very large girdling roots around the base of the tree, which added to the weakness, possibly added to uh, the development of decay. No, the tree was 45 degree angle. It was leaning, yeah. Right, that's yeah. the problem. Yeah. I don't think I, 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 I watch them every day. Were you worried about this tree? Yeah, because I, I can see it, 45 degrees. Oh. How much weight you can handle? It couldn't handle very much. This one, no problem. We go straight. Where do you live? That's the one. That's oh, his that's house. house. Oh, that's your house. Oh, yeah. I watch them every day. No because wonder you were worried. It, it could do 45 degrees. It, it, it's not in my boundary lines. I couldn't do nothing. I just watch it. Well, what you do when that happens is you tell them you're worried. But they think I, I panic. Or you know, oh. A closer inspection of this buttress area where the tree failed shows um, sort of a ram's horning where there used to be um, probably a, a opening that you could have inspected this and it, had you drilled into this obvious um, defect from an early injury you might have been able to predict just how hollow this tree was. Um, sometimes it's hard to second guess these things after they fall down but I believe this could have been um, could have been avoided. I, I think it could have been um, inspected by a certified arborist, and uh, the hazard could have been recognized. This is more on the Aleppo pine that uh, failed at the base, and this is where it impacted the house. It went right through the roof there. And there's some holes up on the top. The entire base of the tree fell down, and, or cracked and fell, so it didn't. It wasn't a slow bend over. Currently, we are leaving these 
limbs right here because they are help, helping to support the entire mass. We also have one small support on the trunk over there, but uh, we we're going to try to preserve that fence post if possible. Uh, we'll do the best top job we can here, but uh, this is a much, much more complicated job than uh, I think people are, are considering. There's, there's a lot to this tree. And we've got some really big wood that we've got to get out of here too. So the uh, people are very concerned about their lawn. So we've brought in plywood and we've pretty much built a roadway that we'll be able to wheel all the wood out of the backyard and uh, minimize the impact to the lawn. But it's a, it's a big tree. The trunk diameter at the base here is close to four feet in diameter. And the whole inside of this is completely rotted away. So we've got our hands full. We've got a lot of work to do on this tree still. We'll be out here all day with a four-man crew. And a big part of this is, uh, is cutting up this wood. You know, sometimes we get into jobs that have a narrow backyard or a delicate surface to work with. And sometimes we get a client that is very concerned about something like their lawn. So this is a, uh, a way that we have learn to minimize the impact to a lawn. Uh, we use uh, half inch plywood. It's light enough and easy enough to carry and we can make a road base. You can see we overlap each joint because we're going to be rolling all the wood out of here on a big dolly and uh, in essence we're spreading out the uh, the weight on the lawn rather than having the uh, uh, the heavy rounds pushing the wheels and causing ruts in the lawn. This is uh, not going to be an easy job to do.